Today on Nature's Always Right with Stephen Cornett, we're going to be talking all about my sheep, how to move them, how I'm setting up my new electric net setup using reels, getting uh, all of my electric all the way out to this field from my Energizer way up on the back part of my property, showing you how I'm doing it all with temporary fencing very inexpensively. At some point in the future, I will set up a more permanent fence setup but I think this is a fantastic way for anybody, whether you're doing sheep or pigs or chickens or whatever, wherever you want electric, this is a great way to set yours up inexpensively and easily before you do a more permanent setup that costs more. So first, let's go ahead and move the girls. I'll show you what that looks like, give you some thoughts about what I've experienced raising these sheep over the last many months and give you my best advice. So because of how these gates are set up, there's one there and then the ending is over here and I'm going to be running the sheep coming into this area that we're standing on right here. Basically what I'm gonna have to do is start my new nets from that corner, run one this way, run run this way, and that way I will have a gate that they can open into and from here on out, hopefully I will have more uh, easier setups. What that's gonna do though, is leave a little bit of gap there. Doing that can sometimes be problematic because they may see that open area and go straight for that. So in the past, you probably saw my first sheep video when I tried to do uh, a setup like this, they ran out and they ran out into the street and it was a disaster. But uh, as I've moved them many, many times now, they are getting used to me. They're getting used to my voice, my sheep call. They're getting used to this whole process of moving to the next area. And what I'll do is I'll probably just move my truck up into this little gap as a visual block for them. And when I move the net back, I will take their alfalfa bucket and then move it forward. And they're gonna follow me through that. So even if they do get out recently that happened, I was able to call them back, back through the gap that I actually wanted. And it's just so cool because that's what, something I've really enjoyed raising the sheep is um, you start to develop this real relationship with them. I almost feel like they kind of understand me a little bit now when I tell them that, you know, we're going this way and I don't know. There's something about it and um, that I haven't experienced with other animals. So it's been really fun um, getting to be a shepherd and show them the right way to go. Okay guys, so as you can see, I just lay out the entire net. And when I'm doing these square paddocks, not in the woods, which the woods is a nightmare to run nets in, especially these bigger nets. Um, but if you want that feed in there, that's what you gotta deal with. Out here in the pasture, it's extremely easy. You can just make these square size nets. So as long as I start from that same corner and I go out the same amount of length, they end up being at the same point. And I like to just lay the nets on the ground first. That ensures that I am correct in my estimation of how big the net should be. Then I go in with my tool bag here. It just makes it easy. I have a little small mallet and uh, my Falco pruners, of course, to um, cut anything that are at the net area so that there's not a bunch of weeds or grass laying up on the black and white wires, which will take some of the power away from the net. So I've got very hard ground, so that's why I have the single spikes, and sometimes I need to use the mallet. It just makes it a heck of a lot easier. That's why I do not recommend the double spike for pretty much any environment, unless you're in like soft Florida sand or ground that never gets hard because if it the ground gets hard and you have the double spike it's gonna be super hard to get those out to get those in it's, it'll just be a nightmare for you so I don't recommend the double spike unless you're in a very specific situation otherwise the single spike is fantastic and I just use a little bit of mallet to get it in easily the other way to run your nets would be to start at a middle point so at the middle point of the net there they would have both gates open up like that. That's another way you could set them up. But I, to do that for my net right now, I'd have to have too much of a gap like I discussed earlier. So that's why I'm starting at these corners. And it's just super simple um, when you've got two of the same size nets doing a square pattern. Okay guys, we got our net fully laid out now. So now I just need to open this up. I'll open it two lengths just to give them a bigger hole. And then I need to take out this net, which is gonna create that gap. So what I'll do is, I'll get the water and mineral bucket right up here so that when I open this up and open this up, I'll walk straight with it, call the sheep, and then they should just follow me right in. So I'll just put this in ahead of time so they know it's in there. I put a little bit of diatomaceous earth in there now to help with parasites and it's just good for their gut. It's okay, girls. Sheep. Sheep. 
Sheep. Sheep. Sheep. Sheep. As you can see there, maybe, they were looking at that gap. They wanted to go, but they wanted the alfalfa more. So now I just put this fence back in place, add some fresh water, and we're all done. So now let's move on and talk more about the electric fence setup I'm using. If you're enjoying this video, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you want to help support this channel, check out the links in the description below. And if you buy through any of those links, the Amazon, the Drip Depot for drip irrigation, the seeds at True Leaf Market, any of those, I get a small commission from that at no cost to you. I really appreciate you supporting my channel and my work, helping to teach people for free how to raise their own food for their home or their business. So now let's go ahead and I'll show you how to set up one of these reels and how I'm using everything within the system and how I'm running this from my energizer to down here. Okay guys, so the most important thing for this new fencing setup out there is using a geared reel. I'll also be reeling these back in, putting them out, moving them around. This makes it super easy to do that. This one's from Premiere One and I'm very happy with it, how everything, the locking mechanism, everything is working. Uh, Greg Judy recommends Terragate. That is his number one. And then I'm going to be putting on some Polybraid. This is the better form of electric wire. Now there are stronger versions of this and Greg Judy uses like the nine wire wrap, but it's a lot more expensive. I'm also not running this on acres and acres, running it with an ATV or something like that with tons of brambles and all this crazy stuff. If you're in that situation, then I would probably get the super strong stuff. But for me, it's not as necessary. So I just wanted to quickly show you how to reel this on and get it set up. Okay, so I just need to roll this out and I'm using this metal bar here, my vise, and some wood. I already set up one of these reels before, so I just put some tape just to hold that string in place. Now for the proper use of this reel, you hold it in your left hand and your right hand goes like this, so that as you tighten it, it locks in place and it cannot go backwards because of this lock. If you want to loosen it and un unreel the reel, you tie this back. Okay, we'll have it in the forward locking position. So then what I'm going to do is take the poly braid, run it through this guide wire, which is really important, and over the top of this metal piece, and I'm going to tape it down just to hold it in place. And then all I need to do from here is start winding and as I wind, I'm gonna move my wrist back and forth, left to right. I'm gonna also wind very slowly so that I can keep the tension on this really nice and even. I want the spool to hopefully be uh, quite level. Okay guys, how did I do? Pretty good. Not bad for my second time. And I did enough so that my hand fits in here decently and I'm not gonna accidentally you know, touch all this while it's hot. Because one of the benefits of using this thing is you can use all this while the line is hot, move it around um, and then get it onto your fence. And you can actually um, prop it up. You can, you can hang it on here, you can hang it on here. And this is actually all conductive. This is insulated, this handle's insulated. And what I did is to figure this out on my field, I just went on Google Earth and you can measure the distances and I figured out about how far I would actually be running this across my field from the part where it's going to remain hot all the time. And you know, it was like five to 700 feet at absolute max. Uh, so this is definitely over 500 feet of the poly braid. I ordered a 2000 foot roll. Uh, so this should work out fantastic. Okay, so I cut this. Greg Judy said, don't worry about it. It fraying, it'll be fine. Um, and then a little bit more slack. And this little piece here is gonna help me to connect it. So I'm just gonna tie this on. Okay, and then just watching Greg GD, he just wrapped this around a couple times. And then you can just slide that under. Okay, now this is all tight. This is not going anywhere and I can take it to my next location. So all I gotta do now with my reel, put it in the unlocked mode. All I'm gonna do is wrap this around the hotline. I'll just grab it onto there. 
Okay, with it wrapped on there, that's now conductive and it's gonna send the hot onto this line. And then I just walk it out. I put it on the right side, put it tight, loop it around and keep walking. So with the reel to get it hot, what I do is I make sure that this hook is able to hook on there just in case. But what I'm doing now is I wrap it around twice around each of these little hooks. And that way, no matter what, this basically cannot fall off. And then I've also put some post here to help reinforce it. And then I also have one more post back there as well. Uh, and between all of that, it helps to support the net and it's not going to fly off. And then the final thing to get this hot, because all the hot wires on here, you could set it up so that the, the hot actually goes through this and whatever you set the reel on is hot, but I'm just using my alligator clips because it's nice and easy. And now when I turn the energizer back on, it will transfer the wire from the poly braid to the net. So the other way to make this hot without those alligator clips, which is a great way to do it as well, is just get some more slack in your braided line and then just wrap it under the hook there. And now, since both of these are touching this metal, it's all hot. Okay, so the energizer's back on and it's powering the entire fence. So now let me show you how all this is run and goes out to the field. So the power comes out of that wire to the T-post to the poly wire. And that poly wire is run all the way down to the barn down there to the reel. And if you want to see how I set up my fence initially with the ground post, the energizer, and all that good stuff, check out the link right there, or I'll put it down in the description.